Hey, how you doing? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another time here. Welcome to another week. Welcome to another month. Welcome to the second half of uh, the year 2024. We're grateful to God uh, that we are alive and well. We are alive and well. And we're still here on this channel. And uh, it's, a, it's a blessing, it's a privilege to be here. Uh, thanks for coming along. Thanks for sharing this time with me. I've been looking at that 16 to 19. Uh, we're probably hopefully going to close uh, the last section today then move on to the next thing for us in, uh, in Proverbs. But the seventh thing is what we wanted to look at today. You know, verse 16 to 19 details seven things that God ate, seven things that are an abomination to God, seven things that bring us, take us closer to the devil and away from God. God says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you and the devil will flee. These seven things take you away from God. They don't draw you near to God. They take you away from God. And if they're taken away from God, God will draw away from you and the devil will stay. Right? Get what James says. Draw near to God. God will draw near to you. The devil will flee. When you do the seven things, you are drawing away from God. God is drawing away from you and the devil would stay. When you do these seven things, you create an environment for possession. You create an environment for enslavement. You create an environment to be possessed by the devil. You provide an environment to be the personification of the devil himself. Right? So when you do the seven things, you're not creating an atmosphere for miracle in your life. When you do these things, you shorten the hand of God for coming true for you. When you do these things, you begin to militate against your own prayers being answered. You can labor, you can fast all you want. But when you do these seven things, you are closing the windows of heaven. You are creating a brown heaven over your head. It is not the village people that are chasing you. You are the one chasing yourself. When you do the seven things, you become your own enemy. So when we guard against the seven things, then we we'll create it, it will create an open heaven in our life. Right? When we do guide against the seven things, we are drawing near to God. The more we will read our lives of the seven things, we are drawing near to God. And when we draw near to God, God will draw near to us and the devil will flee. We we'll draw near to God. God draws near to us and the devil will flee. When we do the seven things, we create a demonic free environment, a demonic free atmosphere. We, we, we create, a, 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 we open the windows of heaven over our life. We we'll create an atmosphere for miracle. We we'll create an atmosphere for God to have sway, for his kingdom to have sway. When we do when we do things against, when we do things that are not these seven things, right? We we'll, we'll bring upon the blessing in our life, the blessing in our life, the blessing in our life. Right? I'm going to quickly run again, run through the seven things again here as we go to the seventh one. You know, we said it's the proud look. But when I have a proud look, I become the enemy of God. When I have a proud look, I become the enemy of God. Right? So that's the beginning point. When I have a proud look, I begin the process of being the enemy of God. Going on top of a proud look is a lying tongue. With a lying tongue, I begin to dig further into the hole that a proud look has started in my life, right? On top of that, we, we have um, in um, verse, oh, verse 17, you know, is it, it, the hands that shed innocent blood, right? A proud look starts the digging. A lying tongue continues the digging. Shedding innocent blood has to that. And that's what David did, right? David did. David had a daughter with, with Uriah's wife. On top of that, he, he, he killed him to cover his sin. A proud look, a lying tongue. You try to cover your lying tongue. You protect your smallness. You, you, you shed innocent blood. Right? But let's go ahead and pray. Yeah. So we're just looking at, still looking at Proverbs chapter 6 and trying to close that 16 to 19. 
I was just listening to all the seven things that God says he hates. And I said earlier in the morning that these seven things, when we do the seven things, we cannot expect our prayers to be answered. When we do the seven things, we're, we're setting ourselves up to be enemies of God. God cannot bless his enemies. So that's what God will say that when he says he wants to bless us, but his hands are short. Our sins have him that will stop his blessings concerning us. When we do these seven things, we're creating a heaven over horror that is brown, that is that is difficult, that is hard. Mm. You know, we're, we're closing the windows of heaven when time we do these seven things. When we do these seven things, we are drawing away from God. And when we draw away from God, God will draw away from us and the devil will stay. Mm. When we, when we do the seven things, we are drawing away from God. God will draw away from us and the devil will stay. But Bible mm. tells us we should draw near to God. We draw near to God. And when we draw near to God, God will draw near to us and the devil will flee. You know, when we, uh, when we make sure that we don't do these seven things, we do the opposite of these seven things in our life. What we are doing in effort by doing that is drawing near to God. We're drawing near to God. You know, when we, it's, we don't draw near to God by just going to church. Going to church is not drawing near to God. If that's all you do, go to church. The drawing near to God is doing the things that God wants. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's going to fellowship, not just going to fill the space in church. Going to worship, not just going to sit down in church. You know, so we're drawing near to God by doing the opposite of these seven things. As we draw near to God, God will draw near to us. And when God draws mm -hmm. near to what the devil will flee. Affliction will flee. Poverty will flee. Mm. Sickness will flee. Disease will flee. Poverty will flee. Mm. Right? Yeah. But it's up to us. We do, we do the first step. God has already done everything that he needs to. God has made it available. Jesus has gone to hell. He has collected the keys to the, the keys from hell. You know, God has everything ready for us. The next step is us, not God. God has done his part. The next step is ours to make. Mm. I will make that step by doing the right things. You know, that's why Jesus Christ says, seek first the kingdom and his right way of living. Seek, seek first the kingdom and his way of doing things. You know, when we seek is the kingdom and his way of doing things and we do those things, that is how we, we draw near to God, right? So again, like we're talking about instructing ourselves in righteousness. You know, instructing ourselves in righteousness is talking about these things. These things that we should not do. These things that we should do. Because when we do not do them, then we're walking in righteousness. When we do the things we're supposed to do, the opposite of these seven things, then we're walking in righteousness. And the blessings of righteousness will follow us. It will overtake us. Mm -hmm. You know? So, so we, we mentioned them. It started from verse 7 to 17. You know, it's a proud look. It's a lying talk. You know, it's hands that shed innocent blood. You know? When you do that, God cannot be your father. God cannot be your father. It, don't, it doesn't matter how many times you are born again. When you have these things in your life, God cannot be your father. That's what First John chapter 4 was saying. It says, it, it says friendship with the world is enmity with God. Friendship with the, God, with the world is enmity with God. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. Not being a friend of God doesn't mean that you wear gowns, you should be, you should be tattered, not comb your hair, not put perfume. That is not friendship with God that we're talking about. Friendship with God is doing the things that God wants, the things that God likes, and not doing the things that God hates. That is friendship with God, not the gown, not the not using powder, or not using chain, or not doing your hair. That's that's all the decept, decept, deception of the devil. He has caused us to chase after the wrong things so that we don't do chase after the right things. The right things is looking at these seven things and making sure they are not found in your life, right? In verse 18, he continues, it's a heart that devises wicked things, right? You can wear gown, you might not have your bath for the next one month. If you have, if your heart is devising wicked things, God will not like you. You will not be a friend of God. It's not an outward thing, it's an inward thing. It's the inward that affects the outside thing. The outside does not necessarily affect the inward thing, you know? And, 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 and it goes on in verse 18, it says, feet that are swift, you know, to, to run into evil. And in verse 19, it shows a false weakness. And the second part in verse 19 is what we're trying to get through today, but we'll, we're not getting through to it today. We'll continue tomorrow. Is that is someone that sows discord amongst brethren. If you are sowing discord amongst brethren, how can God be pleased with you? You are causing division. You are causing confusion. And you say you are a child of God. And there are people like that. They say they are a child of God, but that's what they do. You know? And they think they are doing right because God has given them up. 
that you know, the deceitfulness of their heart because they are, they are they are chosen that way against all the prompting of the devil. They feel that's the right way for them. God has given them up, you know, and they are deceived, but they are on their way to hell, not heaven. You know, but may that not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Mm. Uh, the sun star says, moving nearer to God, he will move nearer to you. He loves us, but sin has brought disruption between God and man. He said we should try and go back and reconcile with God. We have to reconcile so that we can seek his face. We need to seek his face in righteousness. I said it all. All the messages we hear on a daily basis. He has already made us realize that we should not just be the nearer and close friends, but we do. And we need to that the soul of man will connect as expected of the Lord. We will not just connect with mouth still. We'll be able to connect in spirit and in truth so that the grace to live in righteousness, the holy living, and to do it right, the way that is acceptable, we'll be able to walk through it in Jesus' name. Amen. So that we can see the space and we'll be able to do acceptable things that will make us know that we are truly a child of God. We cannot afford to be deceiving ourselves because God is not mocked. Whatever we soak is what we are going to reap. Pray that He grant us the grace to start sowing in righteousness and in holy living every moment. Not just once in a day, or not just twice in a day, like eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but every moment of life. Amen. 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 God, God, continue to help us. Like Jesus Christ would say, Without me, you can do nothing. We're not sufficient in ourselves, our sufficiency is found in Him. But we never lose sight of our sufficiency. We will never be deceived that we can do this on our own. But His grace is what sustains us, like carries us, and helps us. You know, uh, our boast is not in ourselves. We we're not saying this to say that we are this and other people are that. But we're saying that by His grace we are who we are. By this, by His grace we are becoming what we need to be and ought to be, and by His grace we will arrive at our destination Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hekpalema, have a great remaining of today. See you tomorrow, God willing. All right. Shalom. Bless you, man.